Operating Modal Analysis. Normally, a set of FRFs is curve fit to obtain experimental mode parameters. An FRF is defined as a response divided by an excitation force. Therefore, to calculate an FRF, all excitation forces that cause responses must be simultaneously measured with the responses. However, this requirement cannot always be met. Response only, output only, or operating data can always be acquired, even when the excitation forces cannot be measured. Operating data can be used to calculate Fourier spectra, cross spectra, or ODS FRFs in Emiscope VES. When properly windowed, these measurements obtained from operating data can be curve fit using FRF based methods. To obtain operating mode shapes, the correct relative magnitude and phase of each response with respect to all others must be preserved in the data. The correct relative magnitude and phase of each response is assured if all the responses are simultaneously acquired. When simultaneous acquisition of all responses is not possible, then the same reference response must be measured with all other response measurements. In Emiscope VES, modal parameters are extracted from cross-channel measurement functions using FRF-based curve fitting methods. However, before FRF-based curve fitting can be applied to a set of operating measurements, they must be windowed using a deconvolution window. The deconvolution window removes the second half of the time domain correlation function associated with the measurement, resulting in a summation of impulse response functions. The FFT of the window data can then be curve fit using an FRF based curve fitting method. FRF based curve fitting assumes that each peak in a measurement set is due to a resonance or mode of vibration. This assumption is valid as long as the forces exciting the structure have spectra with no peaks in them at or near the frequency of each resonance. Another way of saying this is that the frequency spectrum of all excitation forces is assumed to be relatively flat in the vicinity of each resonance peak. To simulate an OMA, a round trip will be performed using the modal model in the frequency-based ODS demo project file. The MIMO simulator built into the acquisition window will excite the modal model of the structure with the random force. The simulated acceleration responses of the MIMO model due to the random excitation will then be acquired by the acquisition window and used to calculate cross spectra between all responses in a reference response. The output only cross spectra measurements will then be windowed using a deconvolution window and then curve fit to extract operating modal parameters. The MAC values between these OMA modes and the modes of the original modal model will then be examined to complete the round trip. Execute connect to acquisition front end in the acquisition window. Select use MIMO simulator in the dialog box that opens. Select Shape, Mode Shapes in the next dialog box that opens. This is the modal model containing 10 modes of the Jim Beam structure. To set up the acquisition window to excite the MIMO model with burst random excitation, on the Source tab, turn on Source 1 in the spreadsheet. Select 5Z for Source 1 from the drop down list in the DOF column. Make sure the signal type is random with the burst width set to 60%. On the Measurement tab, select Time in the Domain section. Check Time and uncheck Everything Else in the Calculate section. On the Sampling tab, enter 2000 for the number of samples in the Time section. Execute Acquire Front End Scope. The MIMO simulator will now be excited with the burst random time domain force applied at degree of freedom 5Z. Both the force and 99 responses are acquired from the simulator as time domain signals and displayed in the upper trace display. Scroll through the upper traces in the window to observe the MIMO outputs displayed on channels 1 to 99 and the random force displayed on channel 100.
execute acquire, stop, to terminate the front end scope acquisition. The acquisition window will now be changed to calculate 99 cross spectra between each of the acquired MIMO acceleration output channels and a single reference channel. On the measurement tab, select frequency in the domain section. Check cross spectrum and uncheck everything else in the calculate section. Enter 25 into the number of averages box. To acquire only outputs from the MIMO simulator, turn off channel 100 on the channel spreadsheet in the lower left corner of the acquisition window. This is the MIMO simulator input force channel which will not be acquired. To designate channel 45 as both a roving channel and a reference channel, select the DOFs tab on the bottom of the channel spreadsheet and select both from the drop-down list for channel 45 in the input-output column of the channel spreadsheet. Notice on the units tab in the channel spreadsheet that the units of all output channels are displacement units. To change the output units to acceleration, select the units tab on the channel spreadsheet and double-click on the units column heading. Select G in the dialog box and click on OK to close the box. The acquisition window is now set up to acquire 99 channels of acceleration output from the MIMO simulator. Execute Acquire, Start to acquire the responses and calculate cross spectra between each channel and the reference response. A dialog box will open wherein you can add noise to the output channels from the simulator. Click on OK in the dialog box to apply zero noise to the outputs. Acquisition of signals from the MIMO simulator will begin and 25 estimates of cross spectra will be averaged together. A message detailing the average number out of 25 is displayed on the toolbar during acquisition. When calculation of the cross spectra has completed, the message front end ready will be displayed on the toolbar. Click on the lower traces to make them active. Execute Acquire, Save Traces, and save the cross spectra into a new data block file. In the previous steps, 99 cross spectra were calculated from 99 channels of acceleration data acquired from the MIMO simulator. These measurement functions were then saved into a new data block file. Next, the cross spectra will be windowed with the deconvolution window to prepare them for curve fitting using FRF based methods. Execute Transform, Window Traces, Deconvolution to window the traces. Notice that the windowing also removes noise from the measurements. Execute Transform, Increase Resolution twice. Increasing the frequency resolution will increase the number of samples around each resonant peak, making it easier to curve fit the data. The 99 cross spectra measurements are now ready for curve fitting. Execute Modes, Modal Parameters to begin curve fitting. Press the Count Peaks button in the Mode Indicator tab. A dialog box will open. Select Magnitude in the dialog box and click on OK to close it. Because these measurements still have noise on them, the indicator function is also very noisy, making it difficult to count the response peaks. Execute Curve Fit, Mode Indicator, Smooth several times to smooth the indicator function and count resonance peaks above the noise threshold. Executing Quick Fit will find modal parameters for some of the modes with peaks that were counted, but not all 10 modes. In a case like this, it is better to use the stability diagram to find the modes. Make sure that the AF polynomial method is selected on the stability tab and that the modes box contains 50. Press the stability button. A dialog box will open. Click on yes in the dialog box to start the curve fitting calculation. When the calculation has completed, a number of stable mode groups will be displayed on the stability diagram. 
Display the band cursor and spread the band to enclose the pole groups corresponding to resonance peaks. Notice that there are more than 10 stable pole groups, and that some of the pole groups only have a few poles in them. The number of displayed pole groups can be reduced by increasing the minimum number of stable poles in a group. Select Minimum Number of Stable Poles on the Graphics sub-tab and move the slide bar upward until the number of stable pole groups is 10. Press the Save Poles button to save the average value of the poles in each stable pole group into the modal parameter spreadsheet. The frequency and damping of the 10 modes have been identified. The final curve fitting step is to estimate residues for each mode and each measurement. Press the Residues button on the Residues and Save Shapes tab to estimate residues and display the red fit functions overlaid on the data. Click the Bode Display button on the toolbar. This display shows both magnitude and phase. Notice the quality of the curve fit as indicated by the red line. Press the Save Shapes button and save the modal parameters into a new shape table file named OMA Modes. The final step of the round trip is to compare the OMA mode shapes with the original Jim Beam mode shapes used by the MIMO simulator. The modal assurance criterion value, or MAC value, will be used to compare mode shape pairs. Execute Display MAC in the Shape OMA Modes file and select the Shape Mode Shapes shape table in the dialog box that opens. Hover the mouse pointer over each vertical bar to display its MAC value. It is clear from the MAC bar chart that all of the mode shape pairs have MAC values of 0 0.90 or better. This indicates that the round trip was successful and that OMA gave back the original mode shapes that were used by the MIMO simulator to create the Jim Beam responses. To summarize what we did in this tutorial, the following steps were carried out to simulate an OMA and compare the results with the original modal model used to simulate the structural response. The MIMO simulator in the acquisition window was used to simulate the excitation of the Jim Beam with the burst random force applied at DOF 5Z. 99 channels of acceleration response data were required from the MIMO simulator. 99 cross spectra were calculated between 99 roving DOFs and 15Z as a reference DOF. The deconvolution window was applied to all of the cross spectra. The frequency resolution of the cross spectra was increased to provide more samples for curve fitting. The stability diagram was used to display 10 stable pole groups and the pole estimates were saved. The 99 cross spectra were curve fit to obtain residues, and the OMA modal parameters were saved in a shape table. The MAC values between the OMA modes and the original modal model were displayed in a 3D bar chart. The MIMO simulator in the acquisition window can also be used to acquire a set of ODS FRFs or a set of transmissibilities. Before they can be curve fit, however, the transmissibilities must be multiplied by a reference auto spectrum. Then, after deconvolution windowing, either the ODS FRFs or the cross spectra obtained from the transmissibilities can be curve fit to obtain OMA mode shapes.